Hello. Is there anybody out there? I think I'm under control here. I have the camera oriented the right way. I should be on the Quiet Fire profile. Let me know if I'm not. Let me see. I'm just going to watch. Nope. Oh dear. Hello. Let's try that. Hello. I'm not seeing anybody out there. Oh, Yogi, I see you. Yay, good. Something's working. I'm not quite sure how to get this on my iPad, though. Because I monitor things from the iPad. So I'm not as under control as I thought I was. Kathy Jo says she's here. I just got a message from her. Hello, Kathy Jo. Is it, is it snowing there? Is it snowing in Calgary, Yogi? I'm just trying to find my live feed here. I found it. Yay. There we go. go. Okay, there's my, my pretty welcome sign. I'm a little early, but I thought I'd, I'd try and get the bugs worked out first. There's my, my first welcome sign. Then last week I had this welcome sign. I'm going to sit down now. Can you hear me all right? Hi, Judy Jenkins. If you're saying good afternoon, you must be in my time zone. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Hi, Donna. Thanks for coming. So this is the new welcome sign. Here, I'll move this one out of the way. And that's using the technique we're going to work on today. So we're going to do some color blending today. And we're going to use inks. And it's a pretty cool effect. Yeah, I wanted to use these colors because, uh, well, it's snowing. I live on the wet coast. It's supposed to be raining, if anything, not supposed to be snowing. So we're up to our eyeballs in snow right now. <laughs> I don't know quite how that happened, but anyways, we'll survive. But anyways, this is nice, bright, hot colors for a snowy winter's day. So I guess we could start, or should I wait another minute? I don't really have anything to say other than the weather, you know, the good Canadian fallback conversation. <laughs> the weather's kind of meh. <laughs> Yesterday was gorgeous. There was all this snow and it was sunny. Oh, just gorgeous. Ah, oh, Port Angeles. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I bet you got a bunch of snow because Victoria sure did. They got more than us, I think.
Okay. Well, we can start here. Uh, Judy, I'm on Vancouver Island, so um, up um, up north of Victoria, about three hour drive in Courtney. And we got snow. <laughs> Pretty rare. Okay, so I'm going to move aside my welcome sign, at least the old one. And I've got the new one. And this is color blending on the uh, welcome die cut. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'll move that aside and uh, well no I can I can leave it here for another minute and I say I'm Suzanne and I'm a calligrapher and uh, we have a um, a new Facebook group that you are more than welcome to join I'd love to see you there it's called the Suzanne Cannon fan group um, and um, it, it's uh, I would absolutely love if you join and add some of your artwork using quiet fire products um, to the uh, Facebook page. It's really fun. I love seeing what people have done. So if you want to see more work, you can um, drop into the uh, Quiet Fire Creations blog anytime. I try to get things up on the Quiet Fire Design Facebook page, which is where we are right now, but um, it seems to me I'm a little behind and uh, my apologies to the designers for that. Um, we're also on uh, February 20th, uh, Judy Kaufman is going to be up on the Elizabeth Craft Designs blog with a project using the Away With Words dies. And she always says really interesting things. Oh, all the cool kids have joined Kathy Jo. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> um, and if you ever want to sign up for the newsletter, you can go to the home page at uh, quietfiredesign.ca and on the right hand side, you'll find the uh, sign up form and you just fill that in and um, it's a double opt in. So you, um, um, you sign up and then you'll get an email just confirming that it really is you that wants to join in and um, you just say, yes, it is me and uh, then you're good to go. And I don't send them out the, the newsletters out very often, um, maybe once a week, unless there's something really hot going on, which um, isn't very often. And um, I don't share my email list, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, what else do I need to say? Oh, there's a new category on the Quiet Fire site. Since we've been doing these, um, um, Facebook lives, I thought, well, maybe I should group together all the things that I have on my website uh, and put them in one category, things that I've used in the Facebook live broadcast. And so it's called Letters Live. And it kind of looks like you'd read it, it could be Letters Live. And I kind of like that too, but <laughs> Letters Live is what it's supposed to be. So, hi Marlene. Down in Nanaimo, right? <laughs> Yay! Thanks for dropping in. Oh, can you hear the kitty? He's just realized that I shut the door on him. He's not going to be happy. He doesn't like being shut out. Okay, so that's uh, that stuff. Um, Kathy Jo is going to help me with the links. She's way over on the east coast and I'm on the west coast and uh, here we are to help you out and um, she is actually four hours ahead so she's well into her evening. Happy Valentine's Day everybody. Thanks for coming, tearing yourselves away from your Valentines. So I suppose you're wondering what we're going to do today. Well we're going to take that away and we're going to make a card blending some inks and there it is bright and beautiful and guaranteed to cheer you up during these cold winter months 
So the dies we're using in this project is only one set and it's this one, Be Brave, Be Bold, Be Yourself. Now you don't ever have to use all of these on one card. You can t say Be Brave, like if somebody's going through a hard time, that's a perfect sentiment to send them, Be Brave. Um, be Bold, if somebody's going to um, start a new venture, if they're um, uh, graduating, and be yourself. Well, always be yourself. So it's it's multi-use. You could also use B with some of the other Quiet Fire. Well, they're away with words dies. Um, the um, like be amazing, be beautiful. Um, I can't think of anything else. Be amazing. That I I really like that. Okay, so I can put that aside and back to our, our bright and bold card. So this has a bunch of, um, it really goes fast once you start to make it. Uh, the thing that takes the longest is the drying time because it's on watercolor paper. But the first thing I wanna do is talk about inks and uh, why I'm using ink, inks today. And these are, and you might not have them, um, probably other inks will do. These are called Ecoline, um, vibrant inks and they are made by Royal Talons and they're made in Europe and they're really popular over there. They are bright, brilliant. Um, I um, carried them when I was the um, store at the 2007 Calligraphy Conference, International Calligraphy Conference in uh, Shawnigan Lake. And that was quite a while ago. And one of the instructors wanted them um, because they're very, and he was a European. And, um, and I'm so glad I discovered them. And I carried them for years until the Canadian distributor started, stopped carrying them. And um, uh, nobody was carrying them for a while, but now I'm seeing them more and more. So, and they have brush pens too now. Um, okay, so the, the thing about inks is, and you're probably saying, Suzanne, why aren't you using watercolors? Um, because watercolors can be finicky. Not all watercolors are the same. They're pigments. So sometimes they're more opaque. Uh, sometimes they don't uh, spread as well. Whereas these are all very, the inks are all very consistent and they, they work pretty much exactly the same. Some of them were more intense, so they might seem more opaque, but they're not. They're really transparent. Um, and I think Kathy Jo has a link, an Amazon link uh, to them. Um, so because they are inks and they're dye inks, they are transparent, they're not waterproof, and they're not light fast. And um, so they will fade with time, but hey, you know, I have basil paper that has faded and like there's big patches of it that have faded. So, um, which is pretty sad, uh, but that, that happens. And calligraphers learn about that pretty early on because you don't want to do um, a piece of artwork that somebody's going to hang on to on the wall and it's going to fade within a couple of years <laughs> and that's happened believe me not to me because i learned early enough that it was a problem but inks can be a real problem so that's your equaline inks they're um like i say they're super vibrant and bright um now brushes the the brushes i'm using today oh this is this is so real <laughs> This is a beautiful brush. It's a one inch watercolor flat. And I like the watercolor flats because they're cut straight across the tip. They usually hold quite a bit of ink or water. And we're just using this for water today. Uh, but you can also uh, letter with, with it. So if you hold that at a 45 degree angle, you can actually uh, do broad edge lettering with uh, a watercolor flat. Now, um, the the thing about them is though that it's they're a bit harder to use than a nib because you can't push like a lot of the strokes you push with a nib and it's really hard to push a brush <laughs> they don't like that much okay so that's that's my watercolor flat 
that, uh, and we're just using that for water today. And the other high-tech brushes are the cheapest little things that I can find, and they're just cheap and cheerful. And uh, you just don't want ones that have hairs, you know, kind of <laughs> hanging out like that. Um, you can snip them off with uh, little scissors if you want, uh, but you you really uh, uh, they don't they don't have to be great. They're just for adding color in. Okay, let's put them aside. Okay, you're going to need a water bucket. This is my, I don't know whether you can see that. I can't tip it really because I've got water in it, but it's its ancient. It's a uh, Raphael water, bra uh, water tank. And I looked online yesterday. I can't find it anywhere. And I love it because it has these ridges in the top and I can just lay my brushes on there and they stay right where they're supposed to. So I'm just going to put that out of the way. And that's just uh, my way of, uh, of organizing myself. Uh, okay, so we've talked about the brushes. We've talked about the ink. Uh, paper, watercolor paper. Now, what I use um, was Arches 140-pound cold press watercolor paper. And Kathy and Joe will give you a link to that. Uh, that you can find on Amazon. Now that's a block and it's a little bit different. I buy full sheets of it. Um, uh, calligraphers use uh, arches a lot, have over the years, and usually they use the smooth, but painters will use the cold press. Now the difference between hot press and cold press is the hot press is ironed, hot pressed. So it's a very smooth surface and it takes pen and ink really well. Um, this is for painters and um, Arches is a really, um, it's a pretty tough paper. So that I buy as a full sheet, but that the link that Kathy Jo will give you is, is a block. And that's kind of all, already stretched all on its own. Um, okay, that's that. Quiet Fire Postcards. Well. Not really quiet fire postcards. Oh, poop. <laughs> oh, poop. <laughs> these are these uh, watercolor postcards and Strathmore postcards. And they're, they're cheap and cheerful, really. And um, uh, they take, they, I mean, they're great. They're, they are postcards, but you could use them for anything. They're a little bit small for the project we're uh, doing today. But um, you see where this line is here? Uh, that's that's kind of a no-no. As a painter, you don't really want those lines. Um, and that is because there was a lot of water there and the red just sat right in there. Also, if you go in with a, a, a bunch of water, um, it will create a bloom and it just pushes all the ink away from the center of the drop and and in general you don't want that effect happening if you're a painter but um, it sometimes happens and you just have to go with the flow and that looks like can you see that it looks almost like there's a little bit of gold on there I bet there's some um, gold in my um, water tank <laughs> okay let's put this aside now I have something else um, So Elizabeth Craft Designs has a watercolor paper and it is a 90 pound watercolor paper. So it's a bit lighter weight and I did this on it. Again, it's sort of not the, quite the right format for the, the card we're doing today. Um, also, it's very economical and if you want some watercolor paper and it took the color beautifully. Um, and But I think what happened here is that um, because it is lightweight, it kind of, uh, there was a lot of um, moisture down here and it kind of ran off the page. So you don't get quite as much cockling with a heavier weight watercolor paper. But um, yeah, so that's some options for you. Uh, something else I wanted to show you because we were talking about the fugitive nature of watercolors, of not of watercolors, but of inks is this, and I always pull this out when I teach calligraphy, and it's pretty funny, really, because um, the date on it is December 8, 1988, and I was actually living in England at the time, 
and thought I had time on my hands because I wasn't working. Um, uh, but what I did was I made these strokes with different inks on a piece of paper and then I covered half of it and stuck it in a window and it was there for about six months and you can see where a lot of the inks have faded in that time even the brown so these are all I think they're probably oh yeah they're they're um, carbon inks so they tend to not to fade but yeah so that's that's the kind of thing you've got to watch out for and the I, I didn't have equaline inks back then so I, and I haven't done that experiment with them okay paper ink brushes that's pretty much it for the other items you want is a water jar some paper towels uh, the tweezers the Elizabeth craft design tweezers are good for picking up the um, the words and here's some I die cut die cut the uh, the words out of watercolor paper and once they're wet it's kind of nice to have those tweezers to pick up um, the words and move them around because you probably don't want to leave them where they are okay oh and a water and a spritzer I have my spritzer here I use it for the cat mostly when he's being naughty but um, this is not for spritzing the project it's actually for cleaning up um, the surface where you've been working so you don't get um, watercolor everywhere so it's just most crafters have the distress sprayer of some sort uh, not a distress sprayer but a spritzer okay first step in this is cut yourself a piece of watercolor paper yes Kathy Joe 1988 I am ancient <laughs> been a calligrapher for a long time <laughs> uh, okay so oh you know what I should get more ready there's my water brush ready to go I'm going to take the caps off my inks I'm kind of always worried about spilling things so it's sort of last minute although and I'm going to wet my brushes because wet brushes work pretty well and then I'll just palette them now I know which one goes with which right so that one can go there that one can go there and let me just check yep that's the pink one and Kathy Jo actually gave you the colors of the uh, these Ecoline inks uh, the orange is 237 the red is 318 and the pink is 361 and it doesn't really matter what colors you work with they all work pretty well together mind you if you use one of their purples use it sparingly and in fact you might want to dilute it because it's pretty strong okay first step and you've got you're ready to go now we're going to make these three stripes at once and um, they're going to stay wet <laughs> they are going to stay wet even though all the lights are on <laughs> okay let me get some paper towel handy I always like that okay so I'm going to actually start up in the upper corner we can trim this panel afterwards so make a stroke parallel to the side about three inches long and then pull up and you know you can go over it if you want or just touch in because the water will come out of the brush and then make another one you could actually make little pencil lines to show you where to start and stop the strokes but I have faith you can do it and let's go there it's a little you have to you can see I don't know whether you can see that it's wet uh, I can certainly see where the the wet lines are just going to add in a little bit more water move it around a little bit in the stripes 
and then that's pretty much finished with. Okay, I'm going to start over on the left here with the orange. And I'm just going to tap in some. Oh, that's not very much. Let's get a little bit more in there. There we go. Let's start each, each one of these strokes with a different color. And away it goes. Now let me warn you about that red. It's really strong and it gets everywhere. So maybe back off a little bit on the red. And it seems like the pink doesn't want to move as much. It's kind of interesting because it's, I mean, it's a, it's a dye ink. Okay, let's take the red and stick it in here. Just one drop there. And then add it here too. And go to the pink and put it in there. And we don't have any pink or orange in this one. Let's, let's dot some in there. And then back to the orange. And some orange here. It's really fun to watch this work. <laughs> okay, and maybe a little bit of tipping. Depending on how wet the paper is, how much moisture you have in there, there, and it's filling in the edges. And you know what? I'm going to go down over here. Don't tip it too much because if there's a, too much water in there, it'll actually run right off the page. And if you really need to, you can take your paper towel and turn it into a tiny little point here and then suck some of the, the moisture out. And that's it. Now, if you don't like the bottom there, you can come and clean it up a little bit. But, you know, this is handmade. And there it is. Can you see how fun that is? Nice. Okay, so then what you have to do is put it aside to dry and I usually let it dry because I used to paint a lot and I don't use a heat gun for, for these things. So um, let it dry on its own and it'll be very happy. Okay. Next step is the words. And basically we're going to do exactly the same thing. So what we're using is a wet and wet technique. We're wetting down the paper and then we're, we're adding uh, color into it. So I'm going to really slather these. And if it's good watercolor paper, it'll hold up just fine to a lot of water. But I don't really want it sitting in a whole lot of water, so I'm going to mop some of that up. That's where the tweezers come in really nicely. There we go. Cute. Be bold. Okay. So again, same technique. Just tap in and away it goes. Tap in some there, tap in some there. And like I said before, don't let that red take over everything because it has a tendency to do that. Come on. And I do have a different brush for each of the bottles from my misspent youth in, as a chemist. Okay. You can, you can blend a little more. And sometimes with these these words is because they're quite small, um, you can see the edges. Uh, if you don't paint right over the the edge, you'll see white. So um, just a little bit of a warning there. And then let's do pink for the rest. That nice hot pink. Why not? Hot pink. 
when it's snowing outside. Really, it really is. Now with all that mixing on the paper, I'm not going to stick this brush right in. I would clean it off before I put it back in the bottle. But yeah, how's that for bright? Say cool. Can you see that? Okay. Actually, I can put those right up there and they can dry there. Don't worry, I have some dry ones somewhere. We won't have to wait for those to dry. We could be here all night. That's fun. Not really, I'm sure you don't want to be here all night. Okay, did you want to see the card again? So, here's the card. And uh, what I did was create a mat for it, uh, an accent panel, that's basically doing the same thing. I didn't paint the whole panel, I just painted around the edges. So you can do that because this is just too much fun not to do. Why use a solid color when you can paint some more? And when I cut the um, watercolor paper, I always, um, a full sheet of watercolor paper has a deckle edge on four sides. Most of them have deckle edges on four sides. That's why they're so darn expensive. But so worth it. So all four sides and then tap in some color. And you can really get going here with the color. Now see, if you did this with watercolor, not all watercolors um, will spread the same way. Some of them are grainier than others. I mean, that's what makes painting with watercolor so exciting. Okay. Yeah, try not to let that see this. Now, it could be that I this is a smaller brush and it's just not putting down as much. These are Ecoline inks, Chris. Yeah, brush over kind of fun. I don't ever think I have as much control when I use brushos. There. And then you can actually, rather than, you can tip it up and watch the magic happen. And really the only one of the, well, I shouldn't say the only one, uh, just watch out for those uh, dark blues and dark purples in this because they will um, totally dominate if you're, you're mixing them. So just be a bit careful when you work with them. You might have to dilute them a bit and you can just dilute them with water. I'm going to take this. So that's what you do. And again, you're gonna let that dry. Have you seen enough of that? Pretty, huh? If I tip it, can you see a bit more of the color? I wasn't sure. Some places it's pretty subtle, so I wasn't sure if you could see it. Okay. Let's move on. Let's mop up the mess. Okay, so what have we got so far? We have this. Now this is, <laughs> this is the dry version of the first one I did. Now I have trimmed that 
and I wanted to leave enough room so I could put be bold here. So lift, and then this is the earlier version, the dry version of the accent panel or the mat, and I'm going to put it right there. But first, let's put on the words. And I have, they're hiding over here. There we go. Be bold. And we want it right there. Now, if you've been coming every week, you'll see my technique for making sure these are straight. And decide where you want, let's move. In fact, we're not going to do any more painting, so let's take the brushes and move them out of the way so I don't knock them. So we're going to put that there. And I want those right about there. And I want to make use of this deckle edge in the um, watercolor paper. Okay, let's move those out of the way. These are the dry ones, there's the wet ones. And if you want a more pastel look, then just don't add as much ink. Okay, very lightly, oops, <laughs> and carefully, you're going to run the pencil across there so you can just see it. And then I'm going to flip these over and use my ubiquitous glue dots using that highly technical tool called the fingernail. So I'm just going to roll those off and put them behind the thickest part of the word. You know what? I'm going to put my glasses on. I've been working here without my glasses because this is the only part that's a problem because the glue dots are clear. Pull them off and put them in at least two spots on the word. Depends on the word. Some words are a lot longer than others and need more. And then you can just roll it up there so that you're not going to see any adhesive on the, the other side. And I'm not going to put that down just yet. Let's do bold. Now really, the glue dots people want you to um, want you to put the, the um, project right on there so that you have, and sometimes you, I can do that, depends on the word, and that way you have, you don't have the oil from your fingers messing things up. So there's a couple, that, that actually worked pretty well. This is uh, foundational, so it's a very um, uh, strong letter form. Whereas the italic, which is mostly what I uh, do my dyes with, um, is a very elegant and not quite so um, bold. <laughs> no link to Suzanne's fingernail. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, you, you have your own. You come with them. And then you're just going to want to line these up, bring out your inner calligrapher. That's the baseline that the letters were made on. So you've just created a baseline. Now you might want to add more um, glue dots than I, I did, but you didn't want to be sitting here all night watching me add glue dots. And uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention undo because it's my favorite remover. And you can um, actually run this the solvent comes out here, goes under here, and it will release any adhesive that's dry adhesive, <clears throat> like tape or glue dots, but it wouldn't release um, glue. Okay, glue dots, done with. And then the other thing is, if you're stuck with this, this line and you don't want to see it, just use one of these uh, Tombow Mono Zero erasers and the Zen Tanglers love them and just erase around the, the words and it gets into little spaces. 
really nice. And it's a gut, I mean, you can use a kneadable eraser, but you know how kneadable erasers are sort of soft. And this has um, structure to it. And then I'll just dust that off and it's good to go. Get all those little bits out. Okay. And then just adhere this here. And again, I trimmed before before I actually made this, I trimmed this so that I would know how much bigger to do this. So that I didn't have to go trimming a painted piece of paper. So in the last, well, not, not quite the last step, but pretty close to the last step. So you see, you could, you could do these and then go away from them. Now the, the, um, Elizabeth Craft Designs double-sided tape is strong. And sometimes you want that for watercolor paper because it is so textured, especially the, the uh, cold press, which has lots of texture in it. But the light bounces off color in a very interesting way when it's got that texture. And there we go. And if you want to, you can burnish that down with a bone folder. I use my bone folder for all sorts of things. And then you can pull up the release tape a bit more easily sometimes if you've burnished down the tape. over and match it up in the corner so you have a bit of control and then swoops smooth it out don't rip off your um, words there we go and sometimes there's a bit of cockle to the whole project because we didn't stretch the watercolor paper and that's a subject for a different class is stretching watercolor paper so it's got a bit of bit of uh, bend to it, but you could put it under a heavy book. <laughs> now I mounted this one, the original one, on a white cardstock. But you know what I pulled out later was black. Oh man, look at that! Isn't that gorgeous? So. I think this will go on a, on a black card base, but there you go. And that's pretty much it. It's really easy. It's really fun to blend the colors. And uh, it's a great pop of color for a winter's day. So there's, there's the card I started with. It's a big card, but that's okay. You can make it smaller if you put your, your strokes closer together. So any questions? And yes, Kathy Joe's <laughs> she's actually cutting and pasting what I what I wrote in my, my storyboard, and that's yes, a side fold card measuring six by seven and a half. Usually I do I make five by seven cards. Let's have a look at the difference in these. See, this is a bit smaller. So, you know, you can you can make this smaller. It doesn't have to be quite as big, but sometimes you don't have control over these things. And you wish you did. And there's the, the letters drying away on their own. And they'll be ready pretty soon. So that is Wet and Wet Technique with Ecoline Inks on watercolor paper. Oh, I should tell you too, um, can you mail it to me? Kathy Jo says it would look great in my craft room. Kathy Jo, you've just had the lesson, you can make it. Uh, what I wanted to mention was um, making card bases out of watercolor paper. Yes, you can. This is white and it 
really offends me because uh, it's not the same as the the watercolor paper. Um, so I need to find a better card base that will match the paper more and that would make me happy. Uh, but the thing about using watercolor paper as a card base and folding it is that with repeated opening and closing, um, it cracks through the sizing on the surface and, and the surface might be hard, but the inside is pretty spongy and um, it will actually crack uh, and it will come apart. So that's my, my tip. Okay, so what have we got left here? Um, rather than giving you a coupon code today, I'm telling you about Happy Valentine's Day sale. So it's on the Quiet Fire site, only the Quiet Fire site, not the Elizabeth Craft Design site. And it's uh, all the Away With Words dies are 15% off till Sunday night. So hop over there and check it out. Good opportunity to be bold <laughs> and stock up. Um, and you can see anything that I'm carrying. I used to carry the Equaline inks. I don't, don't do that anymore. I've sort of pared down my extra things. Um, and uh, I used to carry the Oh, well, I, no, I still have a few of the brushes. But anyways, the things that I've used here that I still carry on my site are now over in the Letters Live category. So you can check them out there and see what I have. And um, that's about it. The sale. There is the, <coughs> excuse me, Suzanne Cannon fan page. And if you want to sign up for the letter, the newsletter, go to the homepage and... Um, over on the right hand side, you'll see the, the little box for doing that. Yeah, woohoo, Valentine's Day sale. Any questions? Now I have to clean up this mess, but it was a fun mess to make. I think I'm going to keep all the uh, paper towels and do something with them. So thanks very much for coming. It's been a pleasure. Feel free to email me anytime you want to ask a question. Probably best not to go uh, Facebook Messenger because uh, I haven't figured that out yet. And um, yeah, so again, thanks for coming. Thanks, Kathy Joe. There's a bit of a delay between the the broadcast, me and the broadcast, so I'm just waiting to see if there's any questions. Thanks again for coming, everybody. And we'll see you next week. Bye for now.